Hey, what's going on guys? Fitz here and today I'll talk about my experience with Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. First of all, a big thanks to Alcat Games for providing me an early copy of this game. I've been playing it for the last couple of days and I'm having a blast so far. Before we get to the gist of it, I just want to mention that I did not play the previous Pathfinder game, Kingmaker. However, I did play and completed similar games in the past, such as Baldur's Gate 2, which I consider to be one of the best CRPGs of all time, Pillars of Eternity 1 and 2, and Tyranny, just to name a few. So I went into this game expecting to play some good old CRPG, and I wasn't disappointed. I have played a little over 20 hours so far, and for this type of game, it's just basically like 20% of the actual game. It will probably take me at least 100 hours or so to complete this. Probably even more because I really like doing everything, completing all the quests and trying different builds. I might write a full review if you guys want that, but for now, here's my preview and my impressions of Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. The last time I played a game of this genre was around three and a half years ago, and I have forgotten a lot, if not all, the terms and rule sets. So I went in like a new player, and I still had a lot of fun. The reason why I'm saying this is someone who's watching this video might be a new player, or someone who doesn't have any experience with Pathfinder, Dungeons and Dragons, or CRPGs in general. If you look at all the classes, terms, and rules, there's a lot, but don't get intimidated by them. This game will require patience and sometimes you need to play slowly as you familiarize yourself with everything the game throws at you. Once you get the hang of it, you'll be in an experience of a lifetime. Wrath of the Righteous does a very good job of helping new players with tutorials and timely tips. You just have to have some patience to read them. When you start a new game, the first option that you'll see is the difficulty settings. There are 7 presets available so you can just pick one and jump right into it. For veteran players, you can customize many difficulty options such as removing negative effects automatically when you rest and the severity of weather effects penalty, just to name a few. You can change all these settings during gameplay. There are 6 pre-made characters available so you can start playing right away. Even if you're a new player, I recommend that you create a custom character or at least take a look at all the options available. This is a very good way to start learning and reading about the skills, items, and so on. I was impressed by the amount of character portraits available. There are 81 portraits for you to choose from. If you have a lot of time to spend in character creation, you can even create a custom portrait of your own. There are 25 main classes that you can choose from, and each class has several archetypes. There are also 13 special classes that have some prerequisites. I was blown away by the options available that it took me around an hour just to create my custom character. It felt like there were several hundred classes available to choose from. There are 12 races to choose from, and several character background choices that will have an impact on your character. You also get to spend ability points among 6 abilities namely Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. You choose some feat, then a deity, which again will have an impact on your character. Then you can choose your alignment. The character appearance options are a little lackluster. There are very few options for body type, face, scar, hairstyle, beard, and some colors for your hair, war paint, and clothing. There are several options for both male and female voices though, which is a good thing. Forwards! The path is clear. My wounds pile up! None shall- Calm down! No Damn it! Just like with other CRPGs, you will take control of your character and several companions to do quests to most likely save the world. 
In return, you'll get some rewards and experience points. Then level up and make your character and companion stronger. The main highlight is really the combat. You can play in real-time or turn-based mode. You can change this setting at will. So for most encounters, which are fairly easy, I use the real-time combat. But for harder battles, I use the turn-based mode. You can increase the animation speed for turn-based mode so it doesn't feel slow compared to the real-time mode. I see a lot of Baldur's Gate 2 in this game, which in my opinion is great. So I can't help but compare them. After all, Pathfinder Kingmaker was inspired by that series. If you played Baldur's Gate 2 and still remember some of it, you should be able to relate to what I'm about to say. There are probably some very minor spoilers ahead, so you can skip this part. If you're okay with that, then let's go. So remember the event from the Promenade? Wrath of the Righteous has that. What about a really naive elf healer companion? This game has that as well. What about a talking sword? This game has that, but better. You can transform the talking weapon to any weapon of your choice and give it to your character or even your companions. Game tells me that the weapon will get stronger the more quests I complete for it. So I can't wait to get back to playing Wrath of the Righteous. Oh, I haven't even included the dragons and spiders. So yeah. Sound design in this game is very good. The music is excellent. However, I find the voice of most NPCs and companions are just like okay, except for some. What's it to you, Delvin Dum Dum? You were told to guard me, and I'm not stopping you. But no one told me I had to shut my trap. This is the part where the game needs improvement. I'll be very honest, the performance was not very good in the frame rate department. However, I was able to find a combination of graphics settings to make the game run smooth. I'll upload another video, a really short one, just for that. In case you run into the same problem, you can check out that video. I will post the link in the video description below once that video is live. The game has what I consider a low recommended system requirement. So I expect that, that this game will run fine on my machine, which is a decent one. I played Wrath of the Righteous on an RTX 2080 with the latest i7, 32 gigs of RAM, and NVMe SSD. But the game will still go down to 22 FPS in large areas, even without enemies. Most indoors and small maps don't have that problem. This is the only thing, in my opinion, that will hinder the game to be great at launch. It's not unplayable, but it's frustrating when you experience that. Keep in mind that I'm playing the press copy of the game. Once the game releases, they probably, hopefully, have patched this issue already. Overall, I still enjoyed my time in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous even with the performance issues that I experienced. It has all the formula of a great CRPG. I will be playing more of this game and make some video guides if you guys like that. Let me know what you think and if you have any questions, you can leave a comment below. And as always, if you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Distract them for me.